Hello everyone, welcome to part two of our BGP practice scenario number one. My name is Humphrey Chung, and in this video what we're going to do is we're going to start OSPF and IBGP between routers one and two. Those are our company routers. And then we're going to start eBGP, external BGP, between router two and Cogent, and router two and AT&T. We're also going to need to pop in some static routes to get some things going, and then finally we're going to throw some network statements in there. Actually we're going to do redistribution of the loopbacks into BGP. That's going to get our networks into BGP to the rest of the routers. So I know that I had promised two videos. We're actually going to need to do a third video because I just did a, a practice run and the video ran way above YouTube's new 15 minute limit. So it's going to be this is going to be actually video two of three. All right, so we need to start OSPF between router one and router two before we even need to think about BGP. Reason we need to do that is we need connectivity between the two loopbacks because we're going to appear with the loopbacks as a best practice. So we're going to use Notepad to help us out. Always a good thing, especially with BGP because it has a lot of repetitive typing. So I'm going to do something like that in Notepad, just to sort of keep track of everything. So in R2, it's going to be router OSPF1, and we're going to do the cheating way of throwing in all of our interfaces into OSPF, area 0. I'm going to copy that. Router OSPF1, network all zeros, area 0. I'm going to need to add in two extra lines on R2 because if I throw in all the interfaces into OSPF, I'm going to inadvertently start sending out OSPF multicast out the serial interface towards Cogent and AT&T. I definitely don't want to do that, so I'm going to do a passive interface, serial 00, zero and passive interface serial zero 01. All right, let's start this up on router one, copy that. And there's my R1, enable conf T, right click in there. Okay, router takes it, we go into R2, go to notepad, copy that. R2, enable conf T, right click, hit enter exit out a couple times and we'll wait until the OSPF adjacency comes up. Alright, OSPF is back. Let's just do a quick verification. Show IP protocols. We've got that. Show IP route. And let's try pinging all ones from R2 to R1. That looks good. And we'll ping the all ones using a source of our loopback. And that's good. Alright. So now we can move on to our internal BGP configuration. So I can actually erase that. Or you could keep it up, sort of your preference. So R1, router BGP 25000, neighbor, and we're forming a neighborship adjacency through our loopback, so neighbor 2222, remote AS 25000, going to need to do an update source, update source, loop back zero. All right, going to copy that. And let's see if the configuration will be the same for R2. So R2 router BGP 25,000, so that's good. It's in the same BGP autonomous system. Neighbor, we're going to have to change the all twos to all ones. And then that looks all right. So we're going to copy this for R1. Right click. R1 is good. Copy R2. Right click. Whoop. I guess we have to go into Conf T. Right click there. We're good there. Exit a couple of times. Going to wait for the adjacency to come up. Okay, BGP is up. We have adjacency forming. Let's do a show IP BGP summary. 
And we can see our neighbor there, autonomous system is good, state and prefix is zero, so that's very good. It's not inactive, so we're, we're off and running there. So now what we're going to have to do is set up external BGP between R2 and Cogent, and R2 and AT&T. But before we do that, we have to solve a little problem. We cannot connect to the loopback on Cogent and AT&T. And also, Cogent and AT&T can't connect to our loopback. So we've got to fix that by going to R2. Let's pop open our notepad there. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to set a static route to the loopbacks. So IP route, hopefully you remember how to do static routes, 152123. And let's just make it a slash 32. Even though this is a slash 24, this is going to get us there without a problem. If you prefer, what you could do is do the exact mask, so 2.0 and make it a slash 24 there. That's fine also. Serial 00. zero. going to copy that, save myself a little bit of typing. And the next static route to AT&T's loopback is going to be 153 and serial zero 01. All right, let's copy that into R2, conf T, right click, bam, and let's see if we can ping the loopback of Cogent. Cool, works, right? Well, not really. When you started your ping, it actually sent the ping from serial zero to the loopback. What we actually need to do is send the ping from the loopback zero of R2 and see if it has full connectivity. So let's do ping 152.123. And we could use the source command and source it from loopback zero. Here it's going to die. So the reason is that Cogent and AT&T don't have a route back. So I'm going to minimize R2. Let's go to Cogent, hit enter a couple times, enable show IP route, and you can see here we have no way of getting to loopback zero of R2, so we can't get to the all twos. So we're going to have to do a static route, as you could probably guess. IP route 2.2.2.2, .2 and actually just for consistency we'll do it to the network. So 2.2.2.0, make it a slash 24, 0, 0, 0. This command is also going to be the same for AT&T. Going to go into Cogent, conf T, right click, enter there. Now let's see if I can ping all twos. Oops. There we go. We're successful go into AT&T, enable, conf T, right click, got a static route in there, ping all twos, and we're good. So not too bad there. Okay, now that we've got the static route out of the way and we have loopback reachability, I'm going to go back into R2, and let's do our external, our eBGP network statement. So this was internal. External is going to be neighbor, so loopback of Cogent is 152.123, remote AS 174, neighbor 152.123, update source, loopback 0, neighbor 152.123, and we're going to have to add an eBGP multi-hop, and you could leave it like that, but here we're going to be more precise and put 2 in there. So the reason we need eBGP multi-hop of 2 is that, if I minimize everything down, BGP, external BGP packets have a TTL of 1 by default. So it would send the BGP packet from R2, it's going to hit Cogent right here, and it's going to die. So these loopbacks are actually counted as an extra hop. So we need to do eBGP multi-hop of 2. Get back my notepad there. All right, so that's good right there. Going to copy that. 
and do a similar configuration pointing towards AT&T. So AT&T actually it's not 152, it's 153. So I just changed that. The remote AS is definitely different. It's 7018 and everything else is good. So I can copy all of this. Go into R2. Conf T. Right click. Whoa. Got a little problem there. Let's see what we got. Neighbor 152, 153. Oh, yeah. We need to be in router BGP. So router BGP, 25,000. And now we copy that in there. And it works. All right. So minimize R2. Now we have to do BGP statements on Cogent and AT&T. So this is going to be on Cogent. Router BGP 174. Neighbor all twos. This is going to R2. Remote AS 25000. Neighbor all twos. Update source. Loop back zero. And neighbor all twos. EBGP multi hop two. A very similar configuration is going to go on AT&T. You're just going to need to change a couple numbers there. Instead of router BGP 174, it's going to be router BGP 7018. All right, let's copy this into Cogent. Conf T, right click, enter. And while we're waiting for that to come up, we're going to do AT&T at the same time. Might as well, right? Okay. Conf T, right click, enter, and looks like it took took the commands on AT&T. Go to Cogent, exit a couple times, do a show IP BGP summary. Okay, it's still waiting for everything to hold. Okay, there we go. Adjacency is up. Show IP BGP summary, and looks like we're good. Prefixes are at zero. It's not active, so that's very good. Let's look at AT&T. We've got our adjacency up there. Show IP BGP summary. And we have a good adjacency there. All right, so this was part two, which was basically starting OSPF to get connectivity between our loopbacks. So between R1 and R2, we had to do some static routes in between R2 and Cogent, R2 and AT&T, and also a static route getting back from Cogent to R2. And then we had to do eBGP on R2, Cogent, and AT&T. So that was part two. In part three, we'll actually redistribute the loopbacks into Cogent and AT&T and get some networks flying through our topology. Thanks for watching.